this is my face um <laughs> And um, thank you once again, Jose um, uh, and Thank you to all the team at People in Puerto. You guys are doing an amazing job. Um, um, yeah. So um, I would, I would, before I start and um, sharing my slide, I would say that I'm someone that is, um, you know, passionate about um, seeing young people and everyone just, you know. You know, us clean and doing well in what they do. I used to say something that I love to see people know their business and really know it well. So I, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to, you know, chip in and contribute to this community um, this evening. Tonight, I'll just be briefly talking on design thinking for product managers. And, um, and I'm hoping that uh, um, we can pick one or two things and also, you know, interactively um, learn from each other. Yeah. So um, I'll be sharing my screen right now. And um, okay. uh, please kindly confirm um, when you are seeing my screen, please. We need. It's coming up now. Okay, thank you. All right, I can see it. Great. Uh, let me try and put it in the slide mode. Okay, yeah. So, um, product thinking for product managers. Um, irrespective of the type of product manager that you are, I believe that you should um, have some level of skill sets and uh, in product thinking. So I'm not just only speaking to um, probably product managers that are um, in the area of development or um, specifically to product owners or to product marketers or those in operations in terms of products. Um, actually, I'm hoping that everyone could just, you know, understand that product thinking is what, as long as you are a product manager handling a product, either end-to-end -end or some part of that product, you know, having that product thinking sense um, will help your product to thrive. And when your product thrive, the, the business thrive. Because for me, the business is the end thing at the end of it all. If um, have a fantastic a fantastic product that is not thriving. There's something is wrong, and most of the time, it is that product thinking and everything that surrounds it. So, um, as a way of definition, and if you just want to ask why product thinking, the most important thing about product thinking is the fact that it's user centric approach to product development and the entire phases um, of product management itself, understanding user needs you know, iterative um, prototyping, design also, and then, you know, continuous testing. Um, I also said that it helps increasing product that provide meaningful and relevant solutions to user problem. Yeah, so there's something we used to say um, with me and my team, um, you can build a fantastic product, but it's not solving your, your, your niche, um, and users, then that product is not good enough. It, no matter how fantastic it, no matter how many time, how much. Um, apologies to developers probably on the call. How much you've spent, you know, committed, born, you know, night and you know, you know, trying to get those features and inf um, the infrastructure or the features, you know, up or the architecture of your product. You know, if that product does not solve your target users' need then it has just failed. So product think, uh, design thinking, it's, it's just user-centric approach to product development, but not undermining standard, not undermining objectives, original objectives. Do you understand? You would not definitely not undermining that, but with all that, as a product manager, you already understand what the objectives of your product is, who your user, um, target audience are, who your users are, then the next thing that can make that product to fly and be viable, do you understand, out there is you putting on that um, design thinking, which is making sure that the users 
the um, needs are you know iteratively you know met it, it, most of the times you, you you don't actually meet users need at once or iteratively um yes you will get to that so that is why design thinking matters it matters if you if you want your products to scale through um and mvps and get out there into the market it matters if you're struggling with change management probably is an enterprise product or solution it matters if it's a b2b or b2c anyone it really matters because the 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 attention yes after we've understood the business objective the goal and everything should be what the need the users need why, why should they use my product not the other one out there do you understand so that's actually why it matters and that is why product managers should pay critical attention to you know what the user is saying at every stage of your product especially the very moment you've passed you know conception and planning the very moment you enter into development and you get at all the data you need you should pay keen attention or probably you've launched out uh, you've launched out the products and feedbacks are coming in you should listen into what customer service are saying it's really very key the, the, the product is striving trust me you could do much better don't say oh okay probably we're making you know these numbers so let's relax some people that relax are out of the market today so yeah that's why you know product thinking matters and in um in product thinking there are product thinking first of all is, is a framework is a methodology which we use you know to um to make sure that the users the users are paid key attention and it's not just done anyhow you know it's not just you know done anyhow and um because things that are just done anyhow you know it's no more it's not more guided and most of the times you, you won't see any result out of it. it becomes activities you know without any objective so there are actually five phases um that i'm sure everyone probably knows but i'm just going to also try and um, um shed more light on those five phases empathize define ideate prototype and test in just um a little bit of out of this in terms of empathize one of the reasons why I, at a point in my career, I became very passionate about product is, I think probably people around me <laughs> will tell me, <laughs> take it easy, you and these customers. Sorry to cut you, you're yeah. not in presentation mode. Sorry, I'm not in a... Presentation mode. Oh, wow, probably network is lagging because it's on presentation mode currently here. Oh. But can, could you see my screen? I see my yes, screen. I can see your screen, but not in presentation. Not yet. Mode. Okay, it's actually on presentation mode. Just okay. I've come out from it. Let me go back and see. Okay, is it is it back on presentation mode? Uh, no, it's it's not. Okay, so maybe let me just give it. The problem is work um lags on over. Oh, I'm sure it will coming back on presentation mode. All right. Yeah. So I was trying to pick the first point in the five phases of product thinking. Empathize. So as a product manager, I don't know how to even if I if I want to pour out my heart on this part. You just have to be passionate about what you do. You just have to be passionate about your customers. You just have to be passionate about your users. Like you need to carry them like a baby. I remember uh, one time someone would say is it that um you want to go come just enter these people you know i'm very much heavily on enterprise but i'm also on b2b and b2c and i said yes because if i build a fantastic product and the users you know it doesn't solve their problem day-to-day -day problem their process flows or they can't click on a button it's, it's useless to them first of all it's useless to them and it doesn't really make any sense so as a product manager, I would say, please pay attention to what your users are saying. Pay attention, utilize every you know, means available in terms of all the stages that your product has to go through. I used to say that, yes, we know there is product development life cycle, there is product life cycle, but there's also product management life cycle. And in product management life cycle, you are taking it from from conception to planning to uh, development to 
you know, um, validation and testing and you're launching it out there and then you enter the product life cycle. said, please pay attention to what, you know, the needs are. Don't say, oh, I paid very much attention during development phase. And so um, as it was, as it's launched out and the product has entered the product life cycle. That is why most fantastic products die up because you're no more paying attention. You're no more, um, you know more, you don't care what the users are saying anymore. Probably some, you know, some things that some revenue has started coming in. So you feel that, okay, that's fine. Most of the time what happens is another um, product out there because whatever you, you're doing, someone is probably doing it, comes in that understand what empathy is and um, your customers or your users pay attention sometimes. They are probably go to your um, reviews or your or your social media handles or wherever. Probably you're on the marketplace and they get into the marketplace where your where your product is and listening to what people are saying and they use it to take you out of the market. So pay attention at this part and make sure that you know you're not nothing is left. And then look at the um you know definition. I'm just going to go to the next. I've talked about this and. At the vision, you are putting things in place. I used to say something to my team, and I used to say, I don't want you to be a product manager that is coordinating product manager. Be the mm -mm product manager. And this part, the, defini the definition part is, is actually where really defines you. You put the data together. You can, you can pick out what should be done, what should be I traded on what should be enhanced, what should be built is at the fine stage. I I say something here as a product manager. This is where your technical skills has to show. You 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 need to be able to pick up a, a client um, saying, Oh, I, I want to move left. And you should be able to define moving left, break it down, and then bring it to your design team. Make sure that they design the right thing and before even moving into development okay so and then you know from the problems i in a user-centric manner like i said so this is still product design thinking and in product in in, in design thinking in product management we're not probably not moving yet to development but here you need to really work closely with your design team to make sure that what you have defined is what has been built. There's this very funny video that is always circulating around where you see um, a, bus um, a, a business or um, a business or a user saying, this is what I want, and then probably just drew it like a circle. And then you see a product manager that is not able to properly define, who draw a circle and put something else. <clears throat> and that's the beginning of it. That's the beginning of you know getting it wrong. So I would say they're product managers, you know, here and most of the things you need here is the technical skills probably you need to understand how to you know uh, 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 clean up your data you need to know how, understand how to interpret um words you need to be able to probably at this point if it seems a lot of things put data together clean it up um there are skills that you need to actually just get here data analysis if you need to business analysis at this point is very helpful you would need to you know put on those skills here put on that hat make meaning out of those definite out of those data so you can define it and then pass it don't forget the, the needs of your users the needs of your consumers is very key you know at this point and then you get get to third one is you know your ideas um in product management <laughs> there is nothing like um um as long as your goal is defined, there is nothing like scope holding you back from what your users are saying. Yeah, let me permit me to say it that way. I know that there are things called scope, uh, scope creep, and the rest of them, but mm -hmm. really, it's not for you as a product manager. As long as your goal is defined, and your users are speaking, and your users are, you know, twinkling their eyes and saying, mm, and they are biting that there is nothing you will need to ideate at this point. So um sorry ah, i have that so at this point so ideation sorry that was just repeated but at the point of ideation is the point where your data 
has you know been framed properly and then you start working with your team um if it's in a probably in a software product um as a software product person or even if it's a hardware or anything or maybe um you are managing you are in the health or you're in the food this is the point where you get to put it into private but for, for for some of us in in digital and software and a whole lot of them this is at the ideation point is where you get to put to work do some level of designs either with either low fidelity or high fidelity at this point you begin to you know ideas and see what is possible you know to say, okay can this fly or you brainstorm with your team to say okay can we remove this um can we uh, instead of going full straightforward can we try and bend a little bit you know can we remove some things or can we at this point you ideas and work with your team to make sure that you are getting exactly what should be built and then we move into prototype at this point you you, you need to bring out some visuals you need to be able to show something and here also we also need some skill sets you don't necessarily need to be a designer or a bado in in product design but tech product managers you will need to learn know some skills you will need to be able to for me i will speak for myself i'm not a bado in design but my paper works for me my paper works for me so you may come into where I am and you see a whole lot of papers and a whole lot of things, no fidelity. I, mean, I use that at least, I use that to be able to communicate. Um, yeah, the, the requirement, I also use that to communicate some things to my de um, design team. So create um, simplified versions of the proposed solution quickly and you know, inexpensively without having to spend so much. Multiple concepts at this point will help you so, so that you could visualize it and probably share it with your your users and they can give you some feedback you know don't forget in product thinking in in in, the, um, in design thinking the user is key so what is coming out is how it's good you share it with them you communicate you let them know what's happening but most of the time when it is um a bit to a bit to a bit to a bit to see uh, products your stakeholders here that you need to you know pay attention are mostly internal stakeholders it's probably the product owner it's probably um um probably the, maybe if it's the CEO, the ceo of the product or something but you are working closely with the product owner you're working closely with the your ceo the person that probably will just own that or if it is yourself then perfect and fantastic this at this point the goal for you starting that product or the, the concept at the conception level that goal what you wanted to achieve how you visualize it at this point you need to make sure that that is what you are achieving either with your low fidelity or with high or moving into prototype but you need to be able to make sure that you are achieving that and then you test it so at the testing you know um you don't be as a product manager you don't build product for yourself as a development team you don't build product for yourselves so this time you need to without even having to code and uh, um, probably take it to staging and all of it you need to show your stakeholders the people that want to use this product or probably it's um you know you've just gathered some um, um your target market you gathered some few people and say please come and just even take a look at this what do you think you know Give them the samples that you've designed and say, okay, look at this. What do you think? Allow them, not, not necessarily controlling them. I used to say something at this point, no feedback is useless. Just allow them to express themselves. Get those feedbacks. But I also say this, not all feedbacks that should be implemented. Remember, the product has a goal. That was a reason from the beginning. So stick to your goal. But yes, why we are also getting feedbacks and then I treat it. When everything seems okay, you know, your product is ready probably to move into development. All right. So I just try to look at some of the advantages um, that product thinking over the years, if you look at businesses or products that has passed through and you can see clearly the signature on their product that they were really very really keen on it increase user understanding 
of your product solution. A lot of people build product that user can't even, they don't know their left from their right because you're just busy building. Like I said, it could be fantastic, but it may not be acceptable. Adoption may be, may be very hard and you stay on development for years. So, but important thinking as a product manager, you find out that um, user understanding of your product, user adoption, you have issue, you have less issue worrying about, oh, are people going to download if it's a B2B or are they going to uh, uh, click or log into or whatever? You have because you carry you carried the users along also. Also increase innovation. Yeah, there is something unique about you as a product manager, you know, putting on that hat, that product design thinking hat, you, you will, you cook, permit me, you cook something unique. It was, it, it's good to do competitive analysis and a whole lot of things, but you, if you arm yourself with knowing your target, your target market or your target audience and with product thinking, iterating, going through the process, you will definitely come up with something very unique that will wow people when they see it. And also another one I, I definitely want to mention is the fact that was was the um you know how it was it was the point of having a product and it's not making money. You know, it may be very fine and fantastic, but when it is not making anything, you know, the end result is for it to meet the business objective. And if your business objective has to do with revenue, so people view it may not be about revenue, it may just be to solve problems based on, on their product. But if the business objective is about revenue, trust me, um, you put up, um, thinking and, you know, paying good attention and bringing out something really good, you will definitely have an improved adoption and increase in revenue. Yeah. So, and that's it. So the five of them is empathize, you define, um, um, you, you test and prototype. Empathize, define, prototype, and you test. Thank you so much. Hi, Messi. Hi, Messi. Um, it's still not displaying presentation mode. Could you check that again? Okay, so I just went out of presentation mode and, um, but, and I'm out. Okay, I, let me try going back again and let me get, get the feedback. Okay. But if, at the end of this, um, I could share the slide also. I didn't have a problem with that. It's probably people, you know, to be able that would to be fine. Up. Love that. Yeah, I'm it back on presentation mode. I don't know. Did it come back on presentation mode? No, it's, it's still not there. Right. So I would just, I would definitely, you know, push the slide to across and all the, um, all those on the call can be able to have access to it. So basically oh. that is, you know, what, um um product um product um design thinking in product management is all about like i said it's the very moment from your development to the launching out and getting feedbacks or having your mvp maybe you're not even fully launched out and just have an mvp or from that point to when you fully launch out to so the, the period all through the period of your product life cycle you know entry um and and thriving maturity and all, all through and you know we don't always pray to see the decline stage but yeah when it gets in there before it gets in there your product must have thrived and helped people and i used to say as a product manager if you put on yes i know we, we need to make money with our product but if the the primary objective is to solve problems it's to solve problem then it will definitely thrive with product thinking and um, product and um, design thinking yeah so um that's all from me i from open for questions and um hi was are you there much um mercy thank you very much i definitely enjoyed the session this is more like a refresher for me um the whole design thinking process thank you so much um now we'll go to questions do you have questions for mercy please um use the raise hand button you can also ask your questions in the chat box okay we have um one question here from iperon 
Um, he says, some people are against the opinion that the designer should be involved right from the empathize phase. Please clarify. Thanks. Okay. So, yeah, at, at your empathize phase, you don't really need to get the designers involved. Sorry, uh, product managers. And um, if I'm going to be on the side of the designers, this evening on that. You don't really need to. It's you that you need to do that job. This is the part where you are, you are um, listening in questionnaires, sessions with your target audience, elicitation, or depending on the kind of product you're building. So I don't really see, no, I don't really see um, why a designer should come in at empathize fees. Ideation and prototyping, you start bringing them in. At the points you're trying to ideate, but most of the time is at the prototype level stage that you start bringing them in. But as a product manager, this is about you. You know, this is about you making your products, you know, understanding, building out, defining, and ideating to make sure that what you've defined is exactly what your goals and objectives for that product is. And then before you bring in uh, designers, you know, to start. So, yeah. I don't think they should be involved at empathize phase or else that product designer is as good as a product manager. Awesome. Thank you for that, Iper. And I hope that answers your question. Um, there's also a question here for you, Mercy. Um, Inkechi says, please, one question. How do you identify your target audience? What type of analysis would one need to carry out? Okay. Um, so First of all, as a product manager, you, you let me just take a little narrative. And maybe you got into a project or into an organization or in, you were handed over a product. Um, most of the time there is a business document. But if you are probably a product leader, you are the one building the business document. So the objectives of that product will help you. That's the first that's the first place to start knowing who your target audience are. So for instance, you're building a product, um, health product, that, that is to help people um, maybe take their medications on time. Um, you know, in fact, that one is even uh, too much of a target audience. But yes, you know that you are targeting um, both, um, not so much below 18 years, you're probably targeting those from because those are the ones that you know that need to on their own be reminded they should take their medication so you're targeting from there so when you are uh, pulling out baby sending out questionnaires those are people you are targeting you know and even designing your questionnaires those are people you are going to target and before you start designing that questionnaires or you just want to cater you want to you want your health product to help um medical professionals uh, maybe you just want something that can help with consulting in 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 health you know that your target is not um directly the end users here your target will probably be the health professionals because they will need to use that uh, that your product or is a model or anything that to help them you know get reach their um reach their users they probably reach their patients so it's more of them that you need to target. So the, the goal of your product is what will help you, is the, is the first place that will help you to understand who your target audience are. And then you now begin to also research how big is your market? How big is your target, your, your market is? So are you looking at, um, for example, maybe you're in Nigeria, are you looking at a product that will serve um, the target audience in Nigeria, or are you looking at something borderless that will go outside here? So, but if for now you just know you want to handle the problem here in Nigeria, your target audience are here, but you think that you, your product can be able to solve problem, not just those in Nigeria, maybe an agricultural product, and you've done your research, your father that Nigeria and Kenya, for instance, they have very good, serious challenge in agriculture and you think that this product can be able to serve them, you're going bodiless. Yes, your target audience, you know, are also there. So those are, but the foundation and the bedrock is the goal of the, the objectives, 
you know, you know, when they say talk about the smart goals for your products, those objectives, those are the foundation that will help you. Okay, sorry, I managed to kind of um, took me out a bit and brought me back. All right, can uh, you hear me now? Okay. Yes, can I you can hear, hear you. Yes. Okay. Um, thank you for that. Um, we have more questions here. Um, number one here is, how do we do this without it seeing, seeing like we are doing the job of a product designer? You, I, I, like I said, when you get to... As long as you, like I said earlier, you don't get them involved from as your empathy, define, and ideation stage. But when you get, as a product manager, when you get into, uh, get into, oh, you've ideated, you know exactly what you need and all that, and you need to bring out something tangible, still on your design thinking, and you're not moving into development yet, then you bring them in. But you need to be able to go out there to the markets. You need to be able to understand what your the problem your product should solve, and that is on you, not on the product designers. Okay, I'm done. I know what my problem is. For instance, let me give, use myself an example. Um, I have I already have my release plan. Do you understand? I already have my features and I have my release plans ready. That's when I get designers involved. I'm not going to get them involved from and ask them to come and follow me, um, to come and draft questionnaires or follow me to. Um, to the market or to the hospital and go and do survey. No, no, no that's not your product. That's not product de uh, designer. That is not, or let's see if this product designer is doing design and, and, pro and product management. So you bring them in when you need to visualize and bring out, you know, what you have defined and ideated on. You know, that's when you bring them in as a product manager to say, okay, I'm not so skilled in, in a prototype. I, I I think this is the this is the roadmap we are looking at. Though. Uh, this is what we want to achieve. These are the features we want to achieve now. Now, could you help me bring it out? And you could go for that, like I said, know your business. You know, you could go for that and learn low fidelity. At least you could interpret some of the things. But if you have a very good hand, all you need is designers. All you need to do is have a defined release plan, you know, and now hand it over to say, this is what we're trying to achieve. These are the things we're trying to build out. Probably trying to get your user management ready, get the info, um, the you know the um the platform ready and all of it. And we've done all that, or oh, everything we've done all oh, these are the features that maybe these are the five features, the basic five features that we want to see now. You know, you hand it you hand it over to them and say, okay, please, this is what we should be working on, depending on the kind of culture or the development style you have, if it is agile or if it is the normal. You know, then you work with that. But at this level, in in design thinking, at this level, you need to be able to have a close interaction. So it's not that you hand them over something and you go and sleep, and then after five days you're asking them, "Bros, how far?" Sorry. <laughs> so you no, know, it doesn't work that way. Put it in design thinking, you need to be involved, but not micromanaging, not chasing them because you know what? Where they say they used their um development. Designers and developers, they say they used to run away from product managers because when you overchase them, they'll just be tired. So, but you, before you can get them involved, you must have defined what your products should be doing. You have your requirements, you have your, you understand your non-functional requirements, you understand your functional requirements, you've come up with a release plan for so many people that are practicing Agile, or you've come up with your implementation plan, you know, depending on which one you're practicing, and uh, you even is even as uh, so you you and that will show clearly what the requirements should be, and then you can tell them, okay, for now I want us to focus on probably getting um the login and probably getting the dashboards and probably getting um these features out. Do you understand? And that's when you get them involved. All right, thank you for that. We have um, three uh, more questions here. Um, first one is, how does a PM ensure that on both the user and client end, there is a clear understanding of what problem the product is solving? Because sometimes clients want a specific product. 
okay so i, I want to i want to believe that this person is probably on the enterprise side probably you guys are building in a portal for clients you don't start building until you guys have signed off on either an a, a, um, implementation plan or a schedule or a release plan you don't start building you must sign it off with your client they must see what you have defined they must see it and you guys probably explain it to them send it out to them to sign up but it's not advisable to start um even getting a prototype until you've you've you know agreed on this is what should should be built on and then you can go off and start working but in terms of exactly how you know the full details that's what you now get when you start but I agree on what the overview picture the feature probably the core functionalities of your of that product sorry should be you must have agreed on that before you start you or else you will begin to have conflict you begin to struggle with um acceptance you begin to struggle with adoption you begin to struggle with um um understanding exactly what the, the users need all right thank you that's very insightful um if you have questions please use um the raise hand button you can as well drop your questions in the chat box and also make use of the q a button um another question here mercy is which is ideal at the testing phase testing with users or just the qa team alone or the qa team alone yes mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, wow. If you are looking at uh, design thinking and adoption of your products, test with users. Mm. Um, there's a difference between um, alpha testing and beta testing. If you are doing alpha testing, test with the QA team. But right. your product must go through those two. It must go through those two phases. It must go through both the alpha testing and the beta testing. At beta testing, you just need to get the, the users involved. It mustn't be everybody. It mustn't be the whole of Abuja that's going to, you know, that you have seen that you, that you, you blast, you go to, or you do, you go and do book SMS and no, you could just say, okay, so, so people, maybe that's say of these people, get them involved and just reach out to them probably by email. Um, we have an MVP of our products and, we, you know, they'll say those, so those, so those nice things that make you product manager, you know, relate nicely to your stakeholders and get them to, come on board to spend their time and their thinking and everything to test and give you feedback because that is not something that um she just think we shouldn't as product manager we shouldn't think that oh, it's it's normal it should, it should be appreciated so depending on but your product should be able to go go through the beta testing and the alpha testing and alpha testing is what you do with your qa team and making sure that everything is okay um and that is this one now we're even talking about because this is even moving us from design thinking itself this is almost like i say testing um in a product that has probably done gone through some development just but still on the you know on this um five phases this test um is probably a prototype and yeah the same thing you will just need to find out a, a number of hand fill most of the time you don't even as much as going to that level of probably better testing and just ask them just send them the link and say please can you just take a look at this prototype probably on the figma or you print it out or put on a slide and ask them to please kindly go through it and give you a feedback yeah. all right thank you for that um i latifat do you want to ask your question it's not exactly clear here Hi, so my question was, she was explaining something. That's where the question came out from. When mm -hmm. she was explaining about clients and users, saying they have to like, um, that's when my question came up. Okay. Okay, is, is there, uh, but I didn't get the question, sorry. Okay. Is it written on the chat? 
the question the question I wrote on the chat is is it like business requirement documents when you are saying the clients have to approve before development starts? Well, yeah. So, you know, there are different types of product out there or there are different types of product as a product manager that you may be privileged to manage. So, um, requirement document, um, yes, it's like a requirement document. You know that you, that's when you are going to a client because probably this is a a B two B two B or an enterprise product. But when it is um, just a B two C, or and it's a bit of B two a B two B on it also, all you just need to do is to target your end users and reach out directly to them. So it's no more you know that thing they say um, user persona and buyer personas. You're no more going to the buyer persona, you're probably just looking at the user persona directly and reaching out to them, asking them to take a look at what you have defined. Is it okay? Does it meet you know um your expectations if I release this product? Just ask them that direct question. What do you think? If I build it like this with these uh, features, you really come and subscribe to it, you know, things like that. Yeah. I hope that answers your question, Latifat. All right, um, we're still taking questions. If you have questions that you want to ask, please raise your hand, use the Q&A button, or send your question in the chat box. All right, um, Mercy, we have more questions here for you. Um, Trust is asking, how do you manage conflicting interest? Let's say between you as the product manager and the designer or stakeholders, e.g. business goals versus users' needs during the defined stage okay so for all the product managers in the house this is one thing I, will, I always advise you know that leadership skills you need to understand it very well and use it as a product manager the very moment you begin to have a problem with one team in your development team and you know, one set of team in your entire or an expert in your development team it's um it's a problem you begin to so as much as possible unless if it's a very difficult you know like which we always see you know we do see them but um here is what i i always advise as much as possible um try and take out personal um personal issues personal feelings or emotions out of it you know see that the fact that we need to get something done with do you understand? And when you come and approach it that way, the conflict is very minimal. And but if it's not a very difficult colleague, and I pray that you are not the one being difficult, you could take it up, you know, your management team. And most of the time, management team always trashes it. But try as much as possible. This is always what I preach. I don't know, maybe I do it too much, but I preach it and I mean it. Try as much as possible to have a good working relationship with your team your designers, your front end team, that's probably in a software project, your um, back end, DevOps, everybody, <laughs> if you're maybe data, and try and have a very good relationship with them. And if someone is being difficult, and you know you need this person to get past it, it will, you know, like I said, it's not, per it's, it's not personal. Understand that it's not personal. If you guys are not on that project or on that product together, you know, managing that product, they probably don't even have a reason to. So you could just call this person with your leadership skills and say, okay, have I done something? Did I say something? Which we do say, we do say a lot, you know. Me, I usually tell, what I do tell my team is, before we start most of the very critical, I will apologize ahead of time. I tell them, I beg, I am apologizing ahead of time because I know when we get to the heat of the moment, we are going to say some things that, so, you know, be that leader because as a product manager, you're meant to be the leader. You're meant to be the one that put the glue together. You're meant to be the one that, you know, you know, make sure that everybody has that healthy working environment uh, to thrive and you know, bring out their bring out their creativity and their expertise to help your products you know better. So unless when that like I said, if person now seems to you know there's some people naturally that, that, let me speak broken English for us in Nigeria, some people are just like that. You know that you could 
after you have spoken to the person and the same it persists, take it up to the management level and take it up to the management like, nicely. Don't make it about anything. It's just the person is probably uh, probably person's um, estimation, uh, estimation time and feedback or um, attitude is affecting the work. Please, can you people look at it? You know, and I tell my people, you know, you go into a product or anything, happy, smiling, maybe you're kicking off, everybody's happy, or you just came into a team and everybody's smiling. Please make sure that. When you are ending it or when you are you, you, everybody's not frowning as much as possible as a product manager that leadership skills you know rest on you trust me and we must be able to sometimes you may go home and or you may just go out so and just you know cry your eyes out but you know as a product manager empathy passion is what drives us you want to see this product succeed we want to make sure that we don't fail at it and you know that you can't do it alone you need your team you know to achieve it and that driving you your leadership skill will definitely come out and you can be able to manage them you know properly but humans will be humans and when it gets to that level please take it up to the next level where it's to be handled wow that's very insightful thank you so much i think trust as a follow-up question to that trust you can go ahead and ask the question I trust you have your hand raised. Trust, are you speaking? I cannot hear you. Okay, I'll just go ahead and take um, another question here. Okay, go ahead. Um, the question is, okay, so the person says, I currently work with a startup team of 13 and before joining the before joining the founder um, slash COO and CTO were doing the PM role. I got um, employed to perform PM duties, which they don't allow me to perform effectively. They assign tasks to developers and designers without getting me involved. How do I salvage this situation? <laughs> it's normal. Normal, but how you serve it? First of all, I just want to let you know that it's normal. It's normal when someone is when someone owns a vision. Someone owns a vision, and sorry, <laughs> when someone owns a vision and it's also bringing out the money, hmm? it's normal. So I'm sitting at both levels now to tell you that trust me, it's normal. More, if someone now brings you in, paying you. And doing that, just know that it is normal. It is just that thing, you know, in in product owners, you know, and I don't want to see this thing fail. Is in every is in most of the, most of the time, the managerial level is in us. Don't want to see it fail because you know what's at stake when it fails. So that micromanaging may just be there. Now, this is one of the things I advise, and because I also I was also taught, you know, bring out the skills, your product management skills, bring it out, okay bring it out leadership um knowledge expertise bring it out courage ability to solve problems mm -hmm. let them see you as the ceo of that product let them close their eyes or don't ask about it for one week let them feel that they can close their eyes or not ask about it for one week and they know that this person is dependable let them see the passion in you to make that product succeed trust me they will take off their hands. But at the initial level, so one of the things you also need to do is once in a while, try and have a, a chat with them. If it's a walk-in, if it's a walk-in organization or you're doing remote or hybrid or anything, try and have a chat with them. Just <laughs> chat with them and just on, hear them talk about the products. When they speak, you will hear their fears. And then as a product manager, work on those fears and make sure that those fears does not come to power. When they see the passion, the dedication, they will take off their hand. But if they don't, they're not seeing it. Yes, the employee and paying you money. But if they're not seeing it, they will still want to get it. But because they know what is at stake, probably they have investors and they have people that they are also answerable to. And they have a time timeline that they need to get that product out to the market, you know, and make something out of it, or let it solve the need that it was actually 
so they are you know they want to make sure that nothing is failing yeah you know they don't have somebody uh, there but they want to but at the very moment you show them your leadership skills your product knowledge and uh, product management um, um technical skills they see the passion the dedication um trust me for instance um someone was performing as a product owner or the ceo was there and then hands you over to a team and you people keep having issues every day that you couldn't manage one way or the other as a product manager you should be able to but you it just seems you couldn't manage you just get in with it with almost um this developer or the other person or the other person or the and probably they are actually really really biting you my dear they they do mm -hmm. they do they bite product managers a lot you must be able to wear that cap to say oh this product will succeed that's just it the very moment you have that determination that you say to yourself this thing will work it's going to succeed i'm going to bring out my skills and my talent and my leadership skills is going to work when they irritate you you won't even know when you laugh over it and when they do it and some of them do it on purpose when they do it once twice and if i don't get into this product manager they'll just leave you and then the trust that you need for them to hand off and take off their hands and let you do your thing will be given to you all right thank you very much we have about four minutes to go and we have one more question here to take um okay there are two more questions but because of time um i will only be able to read one of them um ec says as a pm how do i gain trust with my development team also how do i handle difficult team members okay so i saw i saw a question on sdf um social development life cycle yes As, okay yeah, yeah I, I'm, I want you to answer it together yeah. yes how you can okay. gain trust with your developers yeah another one the one on sdlc says at what point in time does L sdlc and software engineering come in okay so gain trust with your developers know your business and know know a little bit of what they know speak their language you you naturally gain trust with them so that's why you see product managers um you need to at the at the entry level at any level continuous learning is your key you can just pick up a course on um software development please take it that's the sdl take it you know and just just understand what they seem to be knowing someone like me i you know take your time sorry i don't know <laughs> sorry please if you hope you're not crying because of what i said but trust me you need to be able to understand their understand when a phone m person should come in what should a phone m person be doing because don't forget you are the one forming the team what should the back end person be doing and you don't know what they should be doing they'll be taking you for a ride now it's normal those guys are very smart so just understand a bit of their language when you have your time don't just learn product management skills a little bit i don't say be technical no but just learn a little bit of some of the things that they know and it will help you to be able to chat with them and you know get close to them also yeah then the sdm so the person asked a question on software development life cycle so the very moment you are turning out designs and designs have been reviewed and approved that's when you get your front end person back and definitely i'm very sure your DevOps is working and you start getting them you get them involved assigning tasks and front end and back end are working because the designs are ready i always say something that design are always a little bit ahead because they need to turn out some designs that have gone through approval and all that we are stakeholders and then you get them involved thank you so much mercy thank you for the insightful session um i guess can you use your emojis to give a shout out to mercy thank you so much i definitely enjoyed it and the insightful answers to the questions thank you so um, much wow thank you forward to having you here again with us um we'll definitely keep in touch thank you everyone for joining um a reminder that we have other programs in the community there is um the group mentorship session and the interview prep sessions that come up um by monthly on tuesdays um this webinar also happens twice a month um second week of the month and then last um second thursday and last thursdays of the month um 
we also have our weekly check-in calls that happen on Saturdays. Um, weekly check-in calls are like um, um, sessions for PM to come and distress, and you can rant there. So this happens every Saturdays. We look forward to seeing you there. If you're not a member of the PIP community, I shared the link in the um, chat. You can do well to join us. We look forward to having you. Thank you again, Mercy. Thank you so much, Thank everyone. You. Thank you so much. Have a lovely evening. Bye. Bye, everyone.